Hello everyone, happy Christmas. My name is Hannah Collison from Inspire Creations and today I'm going to show you how to make Santa modelled in sugar. Here's a picture of the project. And if you would like to join in, here are the materials and how much in quantity to colour uh, for each, uh, each part of the character. So here we go. So there is actually a sizes and shape guide for this project. And if you would like to receive a copy, you can see right at the top here is our uh, website and on there you can contact us. First, what we need to do is make the body for Santa. And I've got 50 grams of sugar paste, which is the paste that you co cover a cake with. It's colored red. And I've added uh, a good pinch of CMC or Tylo's powder just to help firm it up into modeling paste. If you are working with a modeling paste already, then there is absolutely no need to add more of the CMC. To warm up the paste, if you give it a good twist, that's the best way. Give it a good twist. The warmth of your hands will start to melt the fat in the paste a little bit. And then when you feel it starting to soften and feel warmer in your hands, you can go ahead and get it rolled into a ball. So I'm just squeezing it a little bit as well. It needs a bit more warming up. And then you can start to roll it into a little bit of a ball shape. Squeeze really tightly between the palms of your hands. That will squish out any of the excess air. And then gradually when you feel like it is becoming fairly smooth and crack free, you can release the pressure between your palms um, and just turn it into a ball shape. This ball now needs to be turned into a cone. I find it easier to put that into my palm of my hand. And then just with this part of my hand here, I'm going to roll between and just create a cone shape. He's quite fat. We need to have a bit of height to him. And once created into a cone shape, it's about six centimetres long uh, or tall and at the widest part, four centimetres and down here, it's probably half a centimetre, three quarters. Place the cone in your hand and use your cocktail stick or you can use a kebab stick just to kind of roll in a little arc shape here. This is just to give him a little bit of a tummy and I'm pressing this upper half so that from a profile you can see we've got a nice plump stomach and then that can be sat upright onto your board. So at this point, give your hands a bit of a clean because they will have picked up the red dye and we're going to be working with white next. So take a 20 gram chunk of your white sugar paste and add it add a pinch of CMC to this if you haven't already and we can give that a bit of a warm up. Now, the idea here is that we are going to make the trim which goes around the bottom and comes up the top here and the quantity of white you've got left should be enough for the remaining trim and the beards, the beard. So just a bit of a warm up and then we're going to take maybe a third of that paste off Give that into a roll into a nice warm crack free ball and between your palms again start to roll up and down so that you get an even sausage shape now you may not use the whole 20 grams but it's good to have enough and do make sure that your hands are clean because that will definitely transfer into the white paste so we've got a nice fairly crack free, well it is crack free, but a fairly even shaped sausage. Sorry, the camera froze then, so I just needed to um, unfreeze. Okay, so we've got our even shaped sausage, nice and clean. And this is just gonna be wrapped around. Now I might need glue, but there's a possibility I don't. So I'm gonna start off by not adding glue at this stage because that can, sometimes cause an extra problem where the glue, the wet, bleeds onto the white. And we're going to use our cutting wheel where it overlaps just to give it a little trim. If you cut one side straight and then just take a little bit off the other side, you should end up with two 
straight sides, straight cut sides joining together, and we can just squish those in. This excess we can use in a moment, so I'm just going to put that in a bag just so it's not um, drying out. And we're ready now to start to texture. So what I'm going to do is just use the cut end of my kebab stick, or you could use a cocktail stick, or even the back of a paintbrush. And the idea here is just to make it look a little bit like fur or wool. And I'm just literally prodding into the paste all the way around. That's flattening it a little bit to make it look more seamless and starting to form the base of the coat. Now, I am going to go all the way around, but to help me, I'm just going to put this onto a polystyrene former just because I want to be able to tip it up to show you. So I'm just going to drop that slightly short of centre on here so that I have got room for his legs. There's nothing going on behind. Well, we do need to make sure that we've got a little bit of room for his present sack if you're going to make one. And we can already put in our kebab stick or cocktail stick. Now, the idea here would be to actually have it so the pointed end goes into the dummy and then we snip off the top. But um, in practice, what you don't want is um, something that's very, very shardy um, actually in the sugar paste. So you might find it easier to uh, put this in the other way around. So I'm just going to push this part. So it's just my non-pointed end, actually. You can do it the other way around if you want. And then press that through the dummy as well so that it's almost at the base. And that just secures it. And when you're ready, uh, just make sure this is loose enough to be able to come back out again. But when you're ready, it means you can transfer uh, your model onto your cake. And we only really need uh, just short of an, uh, an inch at the top here. So I'm just going to snip. Um, so we've only got about, let's show you on the ruler, we've only got about a centimetre and a half there in length. So it's, it's a good idea to get it onto the dummy before you start doing this around. And now I've got something that I can actually tip up, which makes it easier to work with and probably easier for you to see. So I'm working my way around, press the stick underneath as well. You can use the back of a paintbrush. It's anything you've got really, a cocktail stick will be fine. Just something that gives it some texture. Work over the join as well at the back. The join's always at the back, just so you can't, you can't see it so easily. Work your way all the way around so we come back to the beginning again. So I'll just show you that. You can see you've got the texture. OK, so the next bit is to make a section here, which is where his coat would open and close. So we take the rest or probably half of the rest of the paste that you've just been working with. Give that a good warm up. Roll it really tightly between your palms. And then again, roll that into a sausage of similar thickness to before. OK, don't have to worry so much about that being even. Now, my paste is quite wet, so I don't really have much of a concern about this sticking, but you could put a small line of glue up this part if you felt like it was going to um, not, it, not going to stick. When you come up to the top here, just start to flatten it a little bit, because of course it's going to be maybe more fluffy down here than at the top. And we're just going to break this piece off. His beard is going to go under here, so it doesn't have to be very, very neat. And again, we're going to texture with using the back of the paintbrush, a cocktail stick or a kebab stick. And if you texture it all over as a whole piece, we're then going to put a dividing line in the centre to make it look like the coat opens from the front. My brush has actually got an angle on it, so it's quite nice. It um, gives it some interest. Anything will work as long as it looks a little bit woolly, that's fine. And here I want to press it in a little bit just to blend it within the bottom fur, bottom trim. And now we can take a cutting wheel and draw quite a firm indented line all the way up the top, like a dividing line. And that just shows you that the coat will open. I'm just going to 
kind of lift it a little bit on the base here. And if I want to, I can actually just come in here and just give that a little bit of an opening as well. So that's the trim on his coat. And the next step is to make his arms and the trim on his sleeves. So the sleeves, each sleeve is about 10 grams. And if you're rolling it into a ball, then it's about two centimeter diameter on the ruler if you haven't got scales just over. Okay. Uh, the important thing though is when you've got, um, if, you've got, if you're making two arms or two legs, two of something, then it's always a good idea to actually roll the balls and match the sizes manually by eye. Because of course, if you haven't got a really accurate pair of scales, there's a real possibility that you could be a gram out, either heavier or lighter, and you don't want one of the arms to be longer than the other. So to make the arm, give the paste a really good warm up. We've already put the CNC in, into this paste, so it is firm enough to work with. Roll really tightly between the palms of your hands. And once again, we're going to roll a comb, but this time it's going to be uh, slightly elongated. And when we're finished rolling, it's about four centimetres long. And at the fattest end, it's probably about a centimetre and a half. So to check, we've got to kind of make sure that this is actually going to fit. Now, if you feel like that is a little bit too big for the body, and I'm looking at it thinking possibly it is, although he has got a beard and what have you to go on, so it's probably all right. But you could take a little bit off there if you wanted to. We have got his feet going on as well, and they're quite large. So I'm going to stick with that, and I'm going to make the second ball into a cone the same. So rolling nice and warmed up using your hands into a crack free ball into a cone and just match the two sizes before you start. Now to help you a little bit here, if we put these, sit these upright, we can actually press down on them to flatten them slightly. And that way we've got a nice area for the, uh, the woolen part of his cuff to go on. And if we bring the model back in again, my paste is super sticky, but you could paint a little bit of glue on here. Um, and if you're going to do that, put that on, before, make the glue, uh, paint the glue on first before you actually make the arms. And that way it's had a chance to start to become a little bit tacky. So there are his arms. We're going to put that just slightly over his shoulders to make him a little bit more rounded. And um, for extra interest, I'm just going to mark in a V shape on both sides using a cocktail stick. And this just makes it look like he's got a couple of creases and just gives him more interest. You could do the same on the back if you want to. Now the cuffs are made from balls and they are about two grams per cuff. And if you're measuring the ball against the ruler, it's about a centimetre and a half in diameter. So you want to make two that are the same size. So having measured out my cuff balls, I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the inside. So not, not too much uh, because we don't want this to bleed. And I'm going to just take the ball. It's nice and warmed up so there's no cracks in it. And if you take that ball and just press it onto the arm and use the bone modeling tool, you might need a little bit of cornflour on there just to stop it from sticking. And probably with your hands, first of all, press it so it reaches the outside edge. And then take the big end of the bone modeling tool and put an indent in the middle. Not only will that give you a little indent for the hand, it will also kind of spread out the cuff. So we do the same with the other one. If it's been sitting there for a while, make sure that you warm it up. And we're just going to pop that onto the glued area, support the arm. Press on a little bit more with your hand and then use the large end of the bone modeling tool, having put corn flour on there and press in a little indent. And those indents we can already put just a little bit of glue, so right inside there. And just readjust the arms if need be. 
and that needs texturing as well. So you can use the same tool as before. Just be careful that you don't catch the glue on the red because you don't want to transfer that. So we're just giving that a little bit of texture all the way around. Only really going to show from the side and the front. We'll just go all the way around. Okay, so we've got texture on there as well. The next step is to do the legs. Now I'm going to help myself a little bit here by just pressing on either side, just to get a slight indent ready. So it's almost like just here and here. And we're going to put a little bit of glue right in the middle of where the leg's going to go. Just avoid putting too much again because you don't want the colours to bleed. For Santa's boots, we're going to use 10 grams of black for each boot. So you need a total of 20 grams in um, to make them both. And a little bit of CMC in the paste. So I'm just warming the paste up. If you're measuring by ruler, then that would be about two and a half centimeter diameter. So to make the feet or the shoes, make sure the paste is crack free, roll it into a cone Give it one little squish, just slightly to flatten. And then with your cutting wheel, you can draw a little line across the heel end. So this is actually the bottom of the shoe that you can see. If I can make it so you can actually see that. Oh, just actually you can see it from there. It's quite difficult to, um, black's, black's quite reflective on the screen. Okay, so that's one and we can do the other one. Uh, into a ball, into a cone shape. It's not too pointed at the heel end, but you do want something that's definitely cone shaped. And then using the cutting wheel, at the narrow end just cut in a heel. And we've already glued our paste. So we can go ahead and stick these on with the fat end uppermost because that's where his toes will be. And I'm just going to press those just a little bit so they stay in place. They look huge. Of course, you can make them smaller if you wanted to. OK, and this cornflower here will come off once it's dry. We can give it a rub and it'll come off. This leaves us with a little bit of black left over, and that will be for the eyes. Now, the next step is to actually make his head. And I've got 25 grams of skin tone for the head, and that leaves me with a small amount for cheeks and hands. So again, I put some CMC into here already just to help firm it up. The Tylo's powder is the same thing. It's just a brand name, or you might have heard of gum tragacanth. So any one of those items, any one of those products will work to firm up the paste, just so it makes it easier to work with. And what we're trying to do is twist and squeeze and squish out all the air to get ourselves a crack-free ball, and then form that into kind of a fat egg shape, like so. And this is going to go onto the kebab stick. I'm just going to put a small amount of glue. Again, I don't want to put too much. So just a little bit. And put the fat end of your cone shape on top. And just make sure that his head is upright 
Okay, if it's leaning backwards on forwards, then that could be a bit problematic. Using a cocktail stick, locate just below halfway and put a center point where his nose will go. Support the back of his head while you're doing this and then just roll the cocktail stick so it opens up. So you've got quite a good little hole in there. And put a little bit of glue into the nose hole and either side ready to receive his cheeks. It's important this glue soaks into the paste a little bit so it becomes tacky rather than slippery when you try and apply the cheeks. Now the cheeks are made up of two grams for each cheek. I've got, so I've got two balls, two grams in weight. And uh, on a ruler, that would be about just over a centimeter in diameter. And again, these are, it is important that these are fully warmed up and crack free. And just um, pop the remaining quantity of skin tone that you have back in the bag ready for the arms or the hands. I'm going to do, make little mittens for him. So I've got two balls, the same size, and they are going to be attached where we've glued. So you put them either side of the nose and then press them a little bit from the front and then work your finger around the outside edge. Just so that they become a little bit more seamless. Now, if you want later on, you can actually paint blush for on the cheeks, but be careful if you've got any moisture from the glue on those bits that, it, or if there are any cracks, then it will make it look a bit funny. So you just need to take great care um, that you haven't got any glue on the cheeks. And while we're here, we can just take a small ball of paste. It's probably going to be, oh, um, I can't even describe the size. It's quite small. Um, let's give you a, a guide on the ruler. Probably about three quarters of a centimeter. And that we can roll into a cone shape. So I'm just rolling on one side to get a point. And we want that for the nose. So I'm just going to pop that into the hole and we can if we need to we can um, squish the cheeks together just a little bit so now we've got a little nose for him so the next step is to add his beard and i know that his mustache is going to come under the cheek so we'll just paint some glue and then down the bottom here, maybe a little bit onto his coat. And we are also, we're gonna have some sideburns so we can put a bit of glue in that area. And he's got a hat going on as well. So let's give his bald patch a bit of glue as well. Now, while that's just working into the paste a little bit, we can put his eye markings in just so we know where they're gonna go. So I just use the point end of a cocktail stick to pop in a couple of little eye markings, um, which we can just slightly, just very, very lightly glue again so that that is working into the paste. So next we're going to do the hands and I'm going to use two grams of paste. And if you're looking at a ruler to check the size, it's about a centimetre and a half. Make sure that the paste is nice and rolled up and crack free. Roll that into a cone. Now, because it's such a small piece, you might decide it's easier to actually pinch out the cone using your finger and thumb. And we're just going to tap it to flatten just a fraction. So you've got this little teardrop shape. And I'll just do the other one as well. We'll just pop that one down. So warm up into a ball. The other way, I just use the heel of my hand again into a cone. So I'm pressing down on one side 
a bit more and that gives me my hand shape. So now we've got two roughly the same. And if you take, there should be a little bit left over, just a small amount. And if you take that and just a little pip size ball of paste, so about half a centimeter on the ruler, it wouldn't even measure on the scales. Just take two balls roughly the same size, and this will be for the thumb. So a ball, pop it in your palm, use your hand. So take, take one finger on one side, one half, and just roll by, by, while you press down. Do the same on the other one, you'll get two little teardrop shapes. And um, if you place the teardrop shape to the thumb, to the hand, um, and pop the thumb on. Now just remember that you've got a left and a right. So you want to have the thumbs probably on the inside is the best uh, for this. So you're just pressing at the bottom here so that you can get yourself a pair of hands. And if we bring the model back in, just remember the thumbs are in, on the inside. If you press this quite flat, oops, dropped it. Onto, onto the bottom of the little cuff here. Again, take a little bit of cornflour. So I just want to make sure that this is not going to stick. And we just bring the back of the bone modeling tool in and push up just a little bit. And that will give you the indent for his palm, but it will also press it into the sleeve. So if I'm showing you on this one, just take the thumb, put it to the cuff, press it a little bit. It should make contact and hold because you have a bit of glue. Then use the back of your bone modeling tool with a bit of corn flour on there. Come underneath, support the sleeve and press up and that will get the, um, the hands on. And you can position them how you want. I think he looks quite cute like that, actually. Next is to make the beard. So we need about 10 grams of the white. That leaves us with a nice amount for the um, hair, the moustache, and the rest of the hat. So you will have enough. And if we're looking at that in terms of a ruler, it's probably again about two and a half centimeters. Okay. So I'll move him out of the way again. So I'll just take my hands. So you can see I'm warming this up. And what we're going to do is shape it into like a false beard. So starting off with a nice crack free ball, rolling it into a rough elongated cone shape like we did the arm and then press it a little bit now if you feel like it's going to stick just add some corn flour to your hand and the top so that it doesn't um, tear as you peel it off and if I use my finger to press in the top here to form a bit of an indent and now I can start to tease out the parts that would hook around the ears. You can see I've got a bit of a false beard look. If it's starting to crack around the edges, then it might be an idea to remake it, just warm it up first. And I'm now, I think I just want to tease this out so it becomes a little bit longer. In terms of size, we're looking at one long edge is just over six centimeter in here it's about four so this part here is about two and a half okay and then when we come to the model we're going to position that under the chin where you've already put some glue and the eased out part the teased out parts are actually going to wrap around the outside of his cheek now you've still got a uh, beard going on but just want to bring that up just a little bit. And it's quite interesting how the beard starts to transform the character. So once you've got it roughly attached, support the back of his head so that when you texture it, 
his head doesn't get pushed backwards. And the idea here now, and you could use a knife if you haven't got a cutting wheel, but we want to give it some interest and some markings. So you can use the large on, or the small end of your cutting wheel, come up the side. And just as you're drawing, you'll find that that will help push it onto the face as well. And assuming you've got glue in some of the areas, it should stick. So I'm just working my way all the way around, giving him hair texture or beard texture. You could have this part kind of curving up if you want. Uh, we just want to make sure that we don't lose the height just here and avoid catching the cheeks. We don't want to cut into his face. So that gives you some lovely beard texture. Next, we want to make moustache. So I'm working on one gram per side. So we need two one gram balls. And when you measure that on the ruler, it's going to come in about one centimetre diameter here. So we're going to take one side, warm it up. I'll just move him out of the way so you can see me create this. So one side ball and then roll into an elongated cone. I want to give him a bit of a handlebar moustache. So again, warm it up, ball, elongated cone. Now, to help this stick, the next uh, bit is to put a little bit of glue for the moustache from under his nose and under the cheek. And then having created the two elongated sausage shapes, put both of those in at the same time. Now you may need to make room, so you could actually put these two together, give them a little squish and sit them kind of under his nose. <laughs> Looks like a wal walrus at this stage. And then you can just very gently curve following the contour of the cheeks. Now, if you've only just put the glue on, you'll need to watch out a little bit because it will slide. So just give that a few moments to settle and hold in place. And then you can go ahead and texture in the same way. Now, I actually prefer to use the large end of the cutting wheel. And we'll just run that along just to create the texture for the moustache. Oops, I'll just turn that around because that's not cutting in too well. There we go. So now you've got his moustache in and we can use the cocktail stick to open up a little entrance here. And so I'm just pushing the cocktail stick and we open that up a little bit and that will reveal the skin tone colour from underneath and that gives him his uh, mouth. And now we can go ahead and make two little eyes. So we do have some quite a bit of white left. So we've got plenty of what we need now. This is going to be just a little ball. So these are tiny, tiny, tiny little pip sized balls of paste might just transfer my colour here so that you can see the background a little bit better. So let's drop these onto here and move Santa on. And you'll find, might find it a bit easier to see him. So we'll just take the two small balls, match the sizes. You've already put glue onto his eye holes. And if we just touch those little balls they'll stick to your finger a little bit because you've got the grease from the paste on there and then you can transfer these pieces onto the eye holes just make sure they're crack free and then give those a little press on so they inlay a bit and we can go ahead and press in a little indent within the eye white ready for the black for his eyes 
Now, while we're here, if you wish, you can actually give him little eyebrows. So again, you'd be working with a similar amount of paste, two balls, pip size. They're very small, less than half a centimeter. And this time we're going to roll these into little cone shapes. So just roll on one side to get a little cone shape on both of them. And we can go ahead and paint a little bit of glue. Let's just drop that down. A little bit of glue onto the top of his, uh, above his eyes so that we can put the eyebrows on. And I quite like if we put them on with the bushy side outermost because he looks cuter. I think you've got to be careful that you don't make him look angry. And the positioning of his eyebrows can make him look very surprised or very angry, depending on how you put them in. So that looks quite nice. And while we're here, I'm just going to take my fine paintbrush and a little bit of glue just to paint into the eye holes, ready to receive the black in a little while. Now we've already put glue on the top of his head, but we also want to give him some hair at the back. So I'm just gonna glue the area where I want his hair to go. When we make the hair for the back of his head, just make sure that you've got enough for the um, brim of his hat. So I would say probably with what you've got left, keep about half left. So if you pull off about two centimeter diameter, that should be enough for around the brim of his hat. I'll leave that under plastic and then we've got a similar quantity left to work with. So we'll just warm this up. Get it nice and crack free. And that's about two and a half centimeters worth. And we're going to roll this into a fat cone, so just make it slightly pointed at one end and then press down hard. So you end up a little bit of corn flour on there so it doesn't stick. Kind of a fat cone shape. Just want it a little bit wider than that so it fits along the whole of the back of his head to the sides where his um, sideburns are. So now we've got like a cap. I'm just going to press that in a little bit just to cup it in a fraction. And we can get that just placed onto the back of his head. I'll just give it a little bit of a press on all the way around. Be careful because his head is still a little bit on the wet side. And what we need to do with the texturing, we will be able to bring this in here. I'm not trying to build too much on the top because we have got a hat going on. And if you want to, you can give him a fringe as well. So we'll just texture, start the middle, support the back of his head and just start to draw the texture of his hair, making it come down to the bottom. And I'm using the large end of the cutting wheel to do this. We can bring these two ends together. So the side of his hair now joins his sideburn. We'll do the same on the other side, bringing this section in. Just apply a bit of pressure to the cutting wheel. It should just come in. And if you want to, you can bring this up a little bit more. Okay. That's all the hair done. And now we're ready to make the main red part of the hat. So for the hat, we're going to use about 10 grams of paste. It's surprising. It's actually this part is quite small. So it's only about two centimeter diameter of um, red as a ball. And we're going to put a little bit of glue onto the top of his head, right in the center here. Not too much, not too widespread. With the hat, if you make the cone quite elongated, just make sure this is warmed up, then the width comes with the white brim that you put on. 
so ball into an elongated cone otherwise it becomes too big for the head so it's almost like a pixie style it's not it really is quite um quite narrow if i were to measure then it would come in about five centimeter long and about a centimeter and a half wide now with the bone modeling tool you can press into the fat end just to start to hollow it out a little bit and what you want to do is create an indent here that will fit on top of the head so again we don't want to get it too broad we just want an opening that will end up widening that section to about the two centimeter two and a half centimeters then using a cocktail stick you can form some crease lines roughly in the center bring the hat to the head and sit it on so it looks a little bit like a wizard's hat okay so i've just brought the camera up a little bit so you can see that now once you've got that attached, where you've creased, if you take that part and bring the hat down and then pinch the top here just so that it looks like it's got a fold in it. But leave enough room around here so that we can fit the trim, the white trim. And around that base edge, Put a little bit of glue in places so too, not too much it's very important not to overdo this so just a little bit around the base and then a small amount on the tip that's ready to receive the ball in a moment okay and at this point i need to clean my hands again showing you the hat and where the glue is just right at the very base So to make the trim, you've got enough leftover paste. You just want to pull a small amount off ready for the bauble. You might not need all of this, but we can roll it into a sausage, but make sure your hands are clean before you do this. So roll it into a ball, into a cone, not a cone, it's got to go into a sausage. Again, be careful you don't overdo the thickness of the sausage because it's got to be um, in relation to everything else that's on the um, on the piece. Okay, so width wise, most of the trimming is about a centimetre, just under a centimetre in thickness. And this now is going to sit directly onto where you've glued and where it joins. You can either use your fine scissors or your cutting wheel to cut both ends straight. So I'm just going to come in and chop both sides like so. And then join them together. And we're back to the point now where we can use our cocktail stick or whatever device, whatever tool you use to texture just work that texture into the woolly band at the base of the hat all the way around so you can see the texturing all the way around the base of its hat and now the last bit is to do the bauble on the end of his hat and then we just need to put his uh, black eyes and his glasses on. So I'm just going to warm up the ball ball. This is about a centimetre in diameter, just under. But with this, I'm going to make an indent and open that up a little bit like we did for the nose hole, because that piece then, having been a little bit hollowed out, is big enough to sit on the point end of the hat and we've already got glue on there so we can go ahead and stick that on and very carefully keeping it as ball like as you can as ball shaped as you can texture all around
So now he's got his little bauble on. And finally, we're going to find some black to put onto his eyes. And I'll show you how to make the glasses. For the eyes, I'm just taking a little black piece of paste, rolling it to a point, and then between my finger and thumb, I can pull off a tiny amount of black, roll it into a ball between your fingers and drop that down. Try and match the ball sizes so your eyes aren't bigger than each other and try not to make them too big because otherwise he'll look like he's wearing sunglasses. Once you've got two balls that are matching, the same process as before when you picked up your white, you should be able to pick up the black and that can be transferred immediately onto the glued area on your eyes. So the last thing now to make are the glasses. Now the spectacles can be a little bit tricky to make um, and it might take you a couple of times to do them. I've taken a 28 gauge wire that's been cut into three. You can use 33 if you prefer. Leave a gap of about an inch and a half and take the end, the short end, wrap it around your um, brush. Now it's a little bit, I need to, the brush is a little bit fat, so I need to just make that a bit longer. So you'll have about an inch extended. Then this part here will have a bend. We take the brush out, bring it to the other side of where we've just bent, hold it on in place with your finger and wrap around to create the second lens. When you pull that out, just squish it together so that it flattens. And then we want to bend either side so that it gives you the arms of the glasses. Try and keep everything as straight as possible. When you come to place this onto the character, you may need to push the wire into the sideburn area. So just take a bit of care over where you push the glasses in because it will look a bit strange if they're pushed into his head. So bearing that in mind, I need to just kind of roughly measure the length of the arms and trim it with a pair of uh, pliers or sharp, uh, you know, scissors that you don't mind damaging a little bit. So I'm just going to So we're going to then drop those glasses into place and push them onto the model. And there you have Santa with his glasses. Now, if you have a little bit of white left, just make sure your hands have, haven't got another colour paste on there. If you take two balls, probably about half a centimetre again in, um, in diameter and just roll those into cone shapes. We can give him some sideburns that glue over his glass area. And this is where I've got glue on the cheek so I do have to be super careful that I don't actually try and dust those. And if we put the fat end of the the cone in and just give it a little squish on. That gives you a couple of sideburns, which then also disguise his uh, where his glasses have gone in. And very gently, we can texture that to mirror or match his hair. And there you have your centre. To make Santa's sack, I'm using about 25 grams of brown paste. Now, you need to make sure this is warmed up well enough so that it doesn't crack when you try and 
um, shape it. And my paste is a little bit on the cool side, so it's proving a fraction difficult to warm up. I'm just going to start by rolling it into a fat cone shape. Now, it's only a small piece of paste, so if we flatten the bottom a little bit and just kind of flatten it so that the side profile is not as wide as the front, and we can tease out the bottom edges of the sack and hollow out just a little bit at the top. Now, this is where it starts to crack if you try and do too much work on the top. So we'll just ease that out a fraction, but not don't try and go too thin or too far. It is all right if it cracks a little bit because we can put presents in there to hide it. So I'm just opening up and leaving enough room just to put a couple of presents in there so it looks like the bag is loaded. And then you can draw in some seams using your cutting wheel and possibly if you want to, you can have a little patch on there. You make a couple of presents using different colours, you know, combination of pink, red and green looks quite nice or pink, blue and green would look quite nice. And I've just got a small ball of paste, whatever you, whatever size you want. And then we can just shape it into maybe an oblong for one of the presents and a square for the other. We could make a ball shape. And I'm just pressing down the sides here so that it becomes more um, sharp. And these you can just simply stack in to the present sack. So we'll just use, we'll make one more, we'll just create a square. Um, very, very simple and you can do as much as you like. I mean, you can go into so much detail with this and make little teddy bears and trains, um, but simplicity is good as well. So to make a square, once your ball is crack free and you just press on one end, press on the other and keep pressing turn, pressing and turn. And if you want to, you can pitch, pinch the edges so that it becomes slightly sharper. And that will give you a nice little shaped present. So it's just an illusion really. And we can pop that one in there. So it looks like we've got a couple of nice presents to go with a little Santa. And if I'll just take the camera up a fraction so you can see, there we go, you have Santa with his sack of presents. So wishing you a very happy Christmas and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the session. Please feel free to uh, check out the website to see what other classes we have available for 2021. And I look forward to welcoming you all again soon. You take care now. Bye bye. <laughs>